Hello everyone, welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. I am giving this course through NPTEL MOOC. We are on the third week and uh, this is the first module and overall if you look at, uh, we have completed 12 lectures and this is the 13th lecture. This week is going to be another interesting week, another exciting week for you because uh, as I said in the beginning, I am fond of telling stories and I am going to tell you more stories this week. Uh, the reason is that I think that stories are going to make you understand some concepts very clearly, not only making you understand them clearly, but it will also not make you forget them so easily. So, that is the reason why I am going to use some interesting anecdotes and examples. Now, what is the topic for this week? This week we are going to discuss about habits to begin with and then at least uh, uh, three lectures I am just going to focus on the basic concepts of habits and then I just want to continue with how to stop or how to break bad habits and then how to develop good habits. Now, as usual before I begin this week's uh, lecture, let us just quickly go back to the last lecture of the last week and then just try to identify what did I uh, discuss in the last week. The last week we focused on stress and then I was just trying to impinge on your mind that stress regulation is one important soft skill that you need to develop and that will make you very highly demandable either in personal or professional success. And then towards uh, giving you some suggestions and tips about regulating stress and I overall told you that in order to regulate stress, so you need to do certain things and then I gave you some tips and why should you do that? Basically, you regulate stress for strengthening yourself and remaining cheerful. It is ultimately for you, not for fighting or learning how to fight with other people and then resolve conflicts and then reduce your stress. It is about you. And then it also helps you in terms of completing jobs in time and create time for new jobs or just relax with family or friends. When you regulate, I did not want to use the word like breaking stress or killing stress, but I wanted to give emphasis to the fact that you govern, you moderate, you control and give direction to your stress. Developing personal health habits are formed just when you are able to control stress. You will stay fit, you will be able to eat in time and you will be able to sleep well at night and these are all very important aspects of regulating your stress. I also said you should try to be mindful in whatever you do and you should work with a plan and then you should take frequent breaks from your work also. Uh, both in the sense that when you work for 24 uh, hours, leaving that 8 hours for sleep, suppose you stretch yourself for 13 hours and all that. So, at least you should give break, at least 10 minutes in between, just go out have a cup of coffee or just even just go out take a slow walk somewhere in the lawns or just even just stand on your balcony and take a uh, view on the nature that is outside. It will refresh you, come back and then continue with your work. So, the breaks will actually uh, try to regulate uh, stress or not accumulate stress in your mind. Now, I concluded with some simple strip. Uh, uh, tips for quick relief from stress such as taking a cold or hot shower, talking to your friend, walking in a natural setting, listen to favorite soothing music, deep breathing, watching a favorite movie or reading a favorite novel or pages even from motivating books, some of which I have been discussing in the course throughout. Going to a serene place, it could be temple or a place where you can meditate. For some people, it could be even shopping in a mall. For some more, it is just eating their favorite food and overall nothing will beat stress just but laughing. So, keep laughing and make people laugh also. So, in that way you will try to balance stress in both your personal and interpersonal relations. Now, coming to our main topic, habits for this week. And this week in particular, we will look at how I want to define habits 
or rather how I want you to understand habits in terms of looking at this as part of our developing soft skills and personality and why, need, why do we need to address this at this point of time. Okay. And then the way I am going to look at habits, once again it is not the way it is being discussed in uh, uh, general psychological books, but then uh, it is like with a lot of uh, practical wisdom and how we need to deal with this habit both for uh, channelizing our positive energy as well as for controlling the negative thing that is in every human being. Now, in this one as I said we will try to identify define habit and then particularly try to understand how we can identify good and bad habits. Now, to begin with, what does habit mean to you? Think about it, think about what kind of habits you have and what does it mean to you. Okay. To me, whether it is a good habit or it is a bad habit, I like the picture that I uh, got from uh, internet. It was uh, uh, maybe published sometimes in New York Times or some other newspaper. Now, if you look at the picture that is there, it looks like it is something that you keep going on in a kind of rut, a kind of path, beaten track where you keep moving and then without any change. But at the same time, you have a feeling that you are making some kind of movement, you are climbing stairs, but often this movement is without any progress. So, habit, let us look at habit and then I would like to tell you that for some of you or for most of you, for most people, habit is something they do normally, spontaneously, regularly without paying attention, without thinking or bothering about it. Sometimes it is just completely unconscious, you do not even know that you are doing something out of habit. It is just sheer habit that you have formed and then it is making you do something which even you do not know. So, some examples look at the pictures for, uh, for example, biting your nails, okay. sometimes you do not do it consciously. Psychologists would attribute certain things like nervousness or uh, uh, lack of interest. So, so many things can be attributed, but whatever psychological reasons are being attributed to that, biting nails is actually a habit and so is picking one's nose. Okay. Again, uh, sometimes people do it deliberately, sometimes they do not know that they are doing it in public and before others. Some kids why some kids, most of the kids and kids in general, they cannot resist eating chocolates. So, even if they have a toothache, it will be very difficult for them to control it. Uh, the small thefts at home starts with stealing chocolates or stealing cakes or stealing this kind of tasty eatables. Now, habit okay, is something that you do thinking that you are rather in control, but you actually do it most of the times without any control unconsciously. So, most of the times people think that they can form a habit as well as break it easily. They also presume that breaking a habit can be done as and when they want it. Now, I should tell you these are presumptions and because of these presumptions, we are actually forming habits good or bad. But uh, what do I want you to think about habit? Let me come to it. Habits in reality are easy to form, particularly it is easy to form in terms of bad habits. Okay. Now, before I uh, tell more about that, let me try to tell you what are habits, how can we define habits? Habits are behavioral responses to stimuli. That means, the way your body, your uh, verbal, nonverbal movement as expressed in terms of behavior and how it is responding to some kind of stimulus, okay, something that is induced from the environment. How are you, how are you responding to that? 
Now, what is interesting about habit is that frequent repetitions can make these responses form behavioral patterns and function automatically. This means initially you start forming some habits and then after some time the habits start functioning automatically whenever it sees a stimulus and then there is something is triggered in your system, in your brain and then it is giving a response or a reaction. Okay. Now, that is habit in reality, but as I have put in the figure, it is rather chaining you to certain pattern, behavioral pattern. Is there an escape or no escape? So, that we will uh, think about in terms of good habits and bad habits. So, as I said, it is easy to form bad habits, but it is difficult to form good habits. It is difficult to break bad habits. Mind you, it is easy to form bad habits, but it is difficult to break bad habits. And they are easily formed, but it is the bad habits they die real hard. They do not go from you so easily. Okay. So, uh, take for example, smoking. Okay. Now, it just starts as fun. Okay, in uh, school days or college days okay. and then it is it continues let us say even till the time of uh, marriage okay. and then before marriage. So, the boy has actually fallen in love with the girl and then the girl tells the boy like until and un unless you stop this habit I am not going to marry you. Now, this is one situation where the person actually thinks that okay, he will give it up, but he finds it very difficult, but because of a very emotionally compulsive situation, let us say he stops it, okay. but they are married, they have a baby and then he once meets his old friends and then they are in a party and then somebody tells him oh, now everything is settled for you, you are happy, why not you uh, have some cigarettes. Now, this is the point where it will be difficult to break some old habits which die hard, particularly the bad habits. Most likely, the person is to be tempted and then he is supposed to take it and then continue with a kind of binge smoking. So, previously let us say he smoked two cigarettes, but he may now go ahead with smoking 5, 6 cigarettes as if to compensate the times that he missed smoking this. So, this bad habits particularly they die hard and then they may surface out and then they stay like the iceberg for quite some time. So, we have to deal with it. Now, before we go to bad habits as such, what kind of bad habits am I talking about or am I thinking about something that is uh, ethical or moral or what kind of uh, thinking I have about good, bad and how do you know what are good and bad habits. I am not giving any kind of religious or moral or any connotations to what is good or what is bad, but then we can have some guiding principles to identify what makes good habits and what makes bad habits. Now, some principles I identified, look at the first one, bad habits do not need great efforts willpower and motivation either to form or maintain. It means compared to good habits which need great efforts, which need willpower and motivation either to form or maintain, bad habits no, do not need such efforts. Take for example, eating junk food. Okay. You can eat junk food without any issue. So, for example, uh, any any kind of junk food, chips for example, when you watch movies, okay, it is easy for you to eat french fries or any oily stuff and especially when you talk to somebody, when you are interestedly engaged in some activity, you do not even think that you are uh, eating uh, the junk food. So, it is easy to form and then slowly you develop an appetite for eating it and then it continues. Look at the second principle that I have talked about. Often you want to hide your bad habits from others compared to good habits. In terms of good habits, 
you rather want to boast about your good habits. So, let us say that uh, because of your hard work, you became a distinguished student in your uh, college and then you won some medals and then you want to display the medals, you want to tell people, look I worked hard and then I benefited, I developed this habit of studying for 12 hours in a day continuously and then I cracked this medical exam, I cracked this JE exam, I won this uh, uh, first prize. Now, all these good habits that you developed, you like to display, but whereas with regard to bad habit, you feel very embarrassed or guilty once someone knows about it. Take for example, your addictions. Okay. Somebody drinks without the knowledge of the mother or the spouse. Okay. Now, when the mother or the wife comes to know about it, he actually would like to tell a lie or to pretend that he just went somewhere, but the friends were doing it or having taken some alcoholic drinks. So, while entering the home, he wants to uh, eat something so as to cover up that he has not actually drunk. Now, any kind of addiction, not only drinking, most of the times if you are thinking that it is something that you should not be doing and you know that it is a bad thing and it is one principle is that you generally want to hide it from others. Stealing for example, okay. so people steal, but then if only they know that somebody is watching as in the case of lifting something in the shop. So, I, I uh, have heard of shops. So, what they do, the only punishment they give is like when they lift, they have hidden cameras and then they capture the person and then by the time the person reaches the counter, they uh, catch the person and with the photo, they display it in their uh, uh, front notice board or they send it to newspaper. So, that is the punishment they give. So, this actually embarrasses the person, it actually makes the person even feel guilty. So, bad habits are something for which you actually feel guilty, whereas good habits you do not feel guilty about it. Okay. Now, look at the third principle, there is no way you can hide any bad habit in the long run. So, take for example, initially you may think that I am stealing, I am an expert guy and then people will not know, but a day will come you will be caught red handed. Take other examples, for example, if you are a uh, smoker okay, and then chain smoker. So, initially you can hide it for some time, but after some time people will smell it uh, from your uh, face. People will also look at your health, they will know that you are coughing frequently, you have some symptoms uh, that indicates that actually this uh, smoking is killing you. More, more than that, your body language will also reveal most of the bad habits that you have. Uh, the simple example is, let us say if you are not sleeping continuously for 2-3 days at night. So, morning itself people will see, either for some people the face will become bulky, for some it will shrink, either way they will notice that there is a huge difference. So, eyes are sunken, so they are not able to see clearly, they are blurry. So, face itself gets more wrinkles. Okay, especially there is uh, this kind of uh, curve below the eyes, all indicating that the night was a troublesome night for the person. For some reason, just by watching TV or whatever it is, the person has not slept. So, each, each bad habit that you form can be seen in the long run very easily by others. Now, uh, look at some more examples that I have given. So, bad habits are very easy to form, whereas Good habits are very difficult to form. Now, bad habits, they are like the dress that you throw it on a chair or on a bed or on a table or like the papers you throw it on a table. So, initially you just throw one okay, and then you think that okay, throwing one more it does not matter, throwing two more it does not matter until it becomes a big pile and then unless and until you devote a whole chunk of your time, it becomes very difficult to clean it. Habits are like that. The papers that you keep piling up on your table or 
that dust that is accumulating on the fan without your knowledge, if you do not clean it regularly, so it keeps accumulating and then it stays there. And then you need to, if you keep cleaning let us say once in a week, it does not take much time, but then if you keep cleaning it once in 6 months or a year, so you need to remove it and then take more time to actually clean it. So, habit is like this, slowly formed, gradually continued, but then it stays with you for a long time with regard to bad habits. Now, what about good habits? I said good habits are very difficult to form. Look at the examples like good habits are uh, rather like uh, uh, purifying gold. Okay. So, when you purify gold, what do you do? You purify that by actually burning, you put that into the furnace, you burn it so that the impurities are cleared and then you make them into pure uh, biscuits. Now, this purification is for a human being is rather painful when you start developing a good habit that is as like a, a golden habit, it is really a, a very painful task, difficult task to start. But then as I compared it with gold, it is going to give you much reward later. You can compare good habits uh, in terms of uh, forming it very difficult by comparing it even to the making of diamond from coal. So, diamond is not just made from coal just like that. So, they need to chisel it, they need to polish it, so they need to beat it, so they need to make it to that particular shape, so that you get that precision of a diamond and its purity. So, is forming a good habit. So, in order to form a good habit, you have to undergo lot of this uh, pressure and painful difficult times, but then once it is formed, it stays like the gold or the diamond with you and just like silver, you need to polish it. Okay. And like I am comparing with noble metals, but that is the case with any other metal, if you want to compare that with uh, good habits. It is just like let us say even copper or anything, you need to keep it polished, you need to maintain it. So, good habits, they are really golden, they are really like diamonds, but still it needs maintenance. You need to polish it and keep it clean, so that it uh, looks good, but nonetheless it is never going to lose its value, even if it is not going to polish it and clean it regularly. Now, uh, I will conclude this by telling you one uh, uh, small story and then we will continue it in the next one. It is about identifying bad habits. Okay. Uh, this is a story that happened between a son and a father. Now, what the son did, he was a very mischievous boy and you can say he was the bad boy uh, from the childhood and then he was doing lot of misdeeds. So, he started uh, beating others, he started using abusive words, he started stealing, he started uh, doing all kinds of uh, misdeeds that normally a father will not tolerate. But this father, in order to uh, make the son realize what he is doing, what he did, each misdeed, each bad thing that the son did, the father went and then he just took a nail and hammered it on a wall. Okay, one room he, the store room wall, he kept it free and then on the wall he was nailing each time the son was making a mistake or making a misdeed or any bad activity. Now, the son grew up and he grew up in doing lot of other misdeeds. He uh, almost murdered somebody and then uh, a, a lady who refused to reciprocate to his love, he very aggressively went and uh, molested her and then uh, that was the point uh, his father interfered and then uh, uh, he said that he is not doing the nice thing and then he saw his father going and fixing the nail on the wall and then he asked him what are you doing? And then the father said that each misdeed that you did for each of your bad habit. So, I was fixing one nail on the wall. So, the son was too overwhelmed. 
So, he was uh, uh, painfully taken aback because the wall was complete with nails. So, then he asked the father, have I done this much? Yes, of course, every small thing that you did, which is wrong, which is bad, I had fixed one nail. So, the son uh, realized that he, sh he has done so much in terms of uh, misdeeds. So, he asked his uh, father, is there a way out? So, the father said, you can do one thing if you really feel bad about it and then if you want to change. I would say, you do each good thing, you indulge in good deeds. So, every good habit that you will form, I will try to remove. So, you replace your bad habit with a good habit, replace your bad deed with a good deed. So, I will remove the nail one by one. So, days passed by, the father was removing one by one, the son changed, he stopped telling lies, he stopped quarreling with others, he became very good and in fact, he changed, he became a very good uh, officer, then he developed and then he became a CEO. And then he went to the same girl whom he molested, he apologized, he took her forgiveness. So, she realized that this guy has completely changed, she accepted him, he married her and then uh, they uh, had a child also and then from the beginning he thought that he will not uh, grow the child like him and then he spent lot of money on charity, he constructed a hospital, he built a temple and then like uh, the entire country came to know about this person and then the father was very happy and the son also thought that he has uh, completely made amendments to whatever bad things that he did. And then he asked his father, father how many nails are removing? He said that son, the last time you constructed the temple, I removed the last nail. Oh, he said, okay, let us go and take a look. And then they went and took a look and again the son was uh, rather shocked because although the father has removed the nails, the holes were still remaining. Okay. The wall still carried the holes of the nails which were fixed and still they were looking bit ugly. Now, the son asked the father, father, I completely changed. I did lot of uh, good things to mankind and then I do not think I have any bad habit left in me anymore. I cannot even think about those things. I am completely a transformed person. But what does this indicate? So, father said, son, what it indicates is once you form a bad habit and then you act accordingly, you perform your action based on your bad habit and then you want to replace that by good habits, that is a different thing. But the bad habits that you did, committed in terms of misdeeds, so those deeds will remain there forever. You can try to replace that with some other good deeds, but you cannot erase the marks completely. So, bad habits leave an indelible mark. Okay. So, you cannot leave that completely. So, the mark still remains there and it is very important that is why when you whenever you form a bad habit and you cannot think that okay, later I will change that, I will change that by a good habit. But the act that you might have committed with that bad habit, so that is likely to remain there and you cannot change that. So, that scar, that mark of the bad habit will remain and that cannot be removed. So, keep that in mind. With that in mind, I am ending this lecture by asking you to look at yourself and then introspect, identify the bad habits that you have got and you think you should stop. In fact, you sit alone and then just note down how many bad habits that you have and how many good habits that you have and how many good habits that you can adopt also. Okay this kind of thinking and then identify. In the next lecture, we will continue more with identifying more in terms of good habits and bad habits and the identifying these bad habits in you is the first step and the next step is to convert them in terms of good habits. So, think about that. I will meet you in the next lecture. Thank you.